Title Fate of Leon, written by Christine T. Pohana. Chapter 2 The Old Lady. I wake up to find that my alarm decides to work this morning. I swear it has a mind of its own. Today looked beautiful and sunny, but felt unusually chilly on Mendeley on this first day of October. I say unusual because the weather stays about a comfortable 75 to 78 degrees year-round. It hardly rains, but the humidity makes up for it. It's a privilege to live in the best-kept secret in California, nestled between Los Angeles and Santa Barbara. It's the best place for elders to live because the crime rate is ridiculously low and the life here is so laid back, just the way I like it. The houses here are very expensive. I was lucky to be able to get this cute, fully furnished, one-story cottage home that was on foreclosure. Got for half what it's worth. The previous owner's grandchild wanted to rent out the place, but it just didn't work out. The only nuisance is being close to a local airport and an Air Force base. They have cargo planes and fighter jets passing by every so often. It gets really loud, but other than that, it's paradise compared to where I used to live. North Hills. That is farther north, about 300 miles from where I am now. A big city and overly crowded. My parents lived there in the same old house I grew up in. It used to be a quiet suburban area and later became congested with cookie-cutter homes built too close to each other. The last time I saw my mom and dad was after Thanksgiving three years ago. Sadly, I left on bad terms with my dad. I call every so often to check on them. Mom is usually excited to hear from me. Dad chooses not to speak to me. And when he does, it always ends up in a heated argument about my drastic change of career. Which reminds me, Thanksgiving's coming up soon. Maybe I should plan a visit and stay for a few days and try to finally make amends with my dad. I decided to enjoy the rest of the day by taking a walk to the beach, just minutes away from my home. It's hard to get out of the house without being stopped by friendly neighbors to say hello or to ask me where I'm going. It feels like they have an obligation to watch over me, since I'm the only one not retired in our cul-de-sac. About a couple of blocks away, I pass over a man-made lake by using the bridge that leads to a sidewalk going through a park where there is a golf course on one side and a community pool on the other. I reach the boardwalk that stretches out about half a mile. Along the way, there are mom-and-pop shops and small hole-in-the-wall restaurants that mostly serve a delicious abundance of fresh seafood. At the end of the boardwalk were stairs that went down to the beach. Beyond that, there are multi-million dollar homes. I took off my shoes to feel the cool sand under my bare feet. I closed my eyes to heighten the sense of the wind in my hair, the fresh smell of the ocean air, and the warm sun beaming down on my face. Hearing the crashing waves on the beach soothed my mind. Wallowing in the inner peace of my deep relaxation, it was suddenly cut short by a low-flying fighter jet. I found myself bent down, kneeling on the sand with my arms sheltering my head, I hear the sound of terror and fear and the wailing of people in pain. Alarmed, I quickly lifted my head to see what the commotion was, but it was just concerned people staring and asking me if I was okay. Embarrassed and trying to regain my dignity, I had to think of something quick, and all I could come up with was, darn finer jets. I thought they were going to drop a bomb. Surprisingly, everyone laughed. We thought so, too. Out of nowhere, a sweet, short old lady from the crowd that looked like she was in her mid-90s approaches me. Her hair was short, curly, and white as snow. She was wearing an overly large green sweater covering her long, flower-printed dress. In a sweet, maleficent voice, she says, Are you okay, my dear sweet pea? I looked at her in an astonishment. I'm sorry, what did you just say? Are you okay? No, after that, you said, dear sweet pea. Oh, she chuckled. I'm sorry, I call my grandchildren that. It's a force of habit. Do I know you from somewhere? A feeling of deja vu. 
No, I believe this is the first time we have met. Maybe you should sit down. You look a little pale. It's okay, I'm fine. Just a bit startled. I'll come around. I smiled to give her reassurance. I better get going. I appreciate your concern, but I do feel fine. Really, I do. She places her soft, fragile, and warm hands upon mine and sweetly says with a sweet smile, All right, my dear, you take care of yourself. To you as well, placing my hand over hers, returning the warm farewell. As I was walking back home, I couldn't erase that sweet old lady's face. There was just something about what she said I couldn't put my finger on, as if I had seen her before but not sure where. Turning into the cul-de-sac, there was an SUV in front of my house. As I got closer, there was someone sitting in my porch. I barely recognized her. It was Samantha. Like this day could get any worse. It was weird to see her without her uniform. Her long, platinum, blonde, curled hair fell to her waist. She was dressed like she was ready to paint the town red. She had a white fur vest on over her red mini dress that accentuated her voluptuous curves. Her stilettos looked like a painful eight inches, which defined her athletic toned legs. She was sitting there sobbing. I was uncomfortable, but I had no choice but to console her, so I pushed aside her humongous LV bag and sat next to her and asked her what was wrong and afraid at the same time it was going to come out of her mouth. My boyfriend and I had a fight, and he kicked me out of his apartment. I have no place to go. I have no family. I knew where this was going and was tempted to say no, but my damn conscience told me to offer her my place to stay temporarily without even realizing what I just said. She was jumping with glee and hugging me tight. She opens her huge bag and gives me a wad of cash. Here's a down payment. Later we'll work on the monthly expenses. Monthly? Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will get the rest of my stuff from my boyfriend's. I'll be back in a few hours. Can I make a copy of your key so I don't have to ask you every time? I promise I'll be a great roommate. Just wait and see. As she was walking away, I looked at the amount of cash she gave me. One grand. Why do I have a feeling I'm going to regret this?